Laser sights enhance and maintain your accuracy in a time of crisis, preventing tunnel vision and allowing quick target acquisition in awkward shooting positions. Crimson Trace, making laser sight standard equipment. Learn more at crimsontrace.com. National voice in defense of your Second Amendment rights. Gun Talk, available on iTunes and on the free Gun Dealio smartphone app for Android and iPhone. To be on the air with Tom, call us now, 866-825-5486 or 1-TOM-TALK-GUN. Now, here's Tom. All right, round and home and round and third head for home. We're in the third act of today's show. I'm Tom Gresham. It is Gun Talk. Glad you could be with us. If you uh, happen to miss any of our shows, you are certainly able to pick them up anytime off of uh, Amazon Fire, let's see, uh, Roku, Samsung, Smart TV, Apple TV, We're, a lot of different ways. You can do the whole Alexa Play Gun Talk thing, which uh, is lots of fun. I uh, just had a guy send me an email that says, hey, I just got the uh, Amazon Fire Stick and I'm just watching gun talk like crazy. I just watched your thing on the 1911 and using it. And why are people afraid of thumb safeties? And so we have a, a lot of things on there that did not appear in our television shows. We're making videos all the time. So check it out. You can go to guntalk.com and YouTube. We've got our YouTube channel as well. All right. Back with you here. Tom Gresham, gun talk. One of the things we like to cover as best we can is the politics. And it's hard to keep up with what's going on with attacks on gun rights around the country because it's coming in a lot of different ways in a lot of different places in many different forms. California seems to be one of those places that there's an awful lot of activity all the time, but fortunately there are groups out there that are working on that. Joining me to talk about that right now, Gene Hoffman from Cal Guns Foundation. Gene, welcome. Thank you, Tom. Glad to be here. You bet. So, Cal uh, Guns, along with Second Amendment Foundation and some others, just filed a major lawsuit against the Attorney General and Department of Justice and seems like everybody else out there. What, what's going on? What's this about? Well, it takes a moment of history to explain it. Um, in California, sure. some guns are normal and some guns are assault weapons. And hmm. that definition has changed over the last 20 years. And each time it changes, they open up a registration window. And if your gun is an assault weapon, you register and then you get to keep it. Well, this time around, uh, we had made bullet buttons, and so a lot of AR-15s and AKs and others came to California, and they decided that a bullet button gun was also an assault weapon. So, Wait, it, so passed, let, let me do, let me just let me jump in. So, before yeah. it was legal, they said that's legal, and that's okay, that that that's allowed. And then they changed their mind and said, no, all those ones where you guys have these guns that we said were legal, now we're, they're suddenly illegal. Yeah, we're going to say you have to register them, and no more new ones can come in, nor no more oh, okay. new ones can be sold in that configuration. Okay. This is all kind of silly because you can still buy a stripped AR-15 lower receiver, and as long as you don't put the features on it, so no pistol grip, for example, it's still legal in California. But Mm -hmm. be that as it may, uh, the California Department of Justice is enforced with, like, setting up these registrations. And because they couldn't get what they wanted from the legislature, which is to create this new category of bullet button assault weapons, they just did it with regulatory regulations, except they, like, rammed them through on the... Friday after Thanksgiving, and I mean, it's all sorts of chicanery, to put it mildly. And, and for those who don't who don't live in California, bullet button is basically replacement for the magazine release. You have to press it in with the tip of a bullet or a tool, because it said that you have to use a tool to disassemble the gun. So this was a way to comply with the law and create this thing called a bullet button. That's exactly it. And, you know, we've okay. been doing that now for... You know, almost eight or nine years. So, I mean, it's a, mm-hmm. it was a good workaround. It got a heck of a lot more gun owners their guns. But okay. the fundamental issue here is if there are now assault weapons, there's no reason you can't take your bullet button off and have a regular good old-fashioned 50-state AR-15. And, of course, okay. the Department of Justice doesn't really want that. <laughs> uh, now, when you say, for those of us not in that world there, when if they say it's an assault weapon, they say that you could register it, you could continue to own it, but they would cut it off and then no new ones could come in. Is that where we are? That's correct. So the idea is that no more assault weapons or with, or no more AR-15s, for example, with pistol grips. There's really no way to do that. Now, of course, there's a new type of bullet button that allows you to, when you open the top, 
the mag drops, and now you have all the features again. Of course, we've worked around it yet again. Sure, of course, because we're, we're always trying to comply with the law, even though it's a stupid law. All right, but these Absolutely. guys sneaked this, this thing through the legislature, and that, is that what I'm hearing? No, it's the other way around. The legislature passed a clean bill that works okay. like every other salt weapons registration ever. But the okay. Department of Justice went through the administrative procedures of creating regulations that expand the scope of the bill. Like a great example, um, they didn't. The legislature didn't change the definition of assault weapons as to shotguns. Mm-hmm. So the Department of Justice created some regulations to make certain shotguns assault weapons, even though the law doesn't say that. That's what the, not what the law says, but the bureaucrats decided they would just add that on. That's correct. And you okay. can't do that in California, even in California. Okay. Even in California. Okay, so, California. so where? So what happens? You, you're filing a lawsuit, but it's essentially challenging the administrative actions here. That's correct. It's the regulations. I mean, you know, there's a separate issue and a separate set of lawsuits about whether you can force people to register and not buy new. That's a very different issue than the, no you know, bureaucrat can go beyond and legislate when the legislature actually legislated. And that's what we're forcing them to face up in front of the judge and say, you know, oh, yeah, well, uh, we think that our exemption is this wide, and it's not. And, of course, this has really big knock-on implications for all sorts of regulatory environment here in California. Mm. Okay, so if, assuming uh, that you win this lawsuit and you say, okay, they exceeded their regulatory authority on this, then what happens to this new assault weapons ban or bill that they passed? Well, so it gives California some choices. They can take the features off their AR-15s and then not register them because they aren't assault weapons without the features. Or they could decide to take their bullet button guns and go ahead and register them and take the bullet button off and put a normal magazine release on and have an absolutely normal AR-15 with all the features they might want to have. Are there any restrictions in California if you have an AR-15 and it is registered as an assault weapon? I always have to put the big quotes around assault weapon. What happens yeah, to those that quote. you have? Yeah, it, it, it's uh, it, it, they, they are treated a little bit more onerously than just owning a rifle. Like you have to lock them up when you put them in your car, but you can still go to the range with them. You can still hunt with them. You can still do most anything you'd want to do with an AR-15, even though it's registered. What's the end game here from the state? Because it sounds like they're just chip, chip, chipping away, but they're not really, I mean, you can still own the ones. They're trying to basically just cut it off so that only the ones that are grandfathered are in, they can you know, prevent any more from coming in. Is that where they are? That's the thought. And the problem they have is that the next step is to ban all semi-automatic rifles. Right. And that's probably a bridge too far. In fact, they tried. And Governor Brown vetoed it, I think, knowing that that was a briar patch that some of us in California wanted to be thrown into. Oh, you said, please do that because we can win that one. Right. Yeah, I mean, if, you know, if we can't buy semi-automatic rifles, period, regardless of features, regardless of whether it's an assault weapon, you know, it makes it a lot simpler for the senior federal courts to look at the issue. Well, of course, we had uh, the Maryland case just got turned down by uh, the right. Supreme Court, which is very troubling to me. That's true. But at the same time, I mean, it's a good time overall. I mean, I, you know, I, a lot of people worry that Kennedy isn't with us in the five in the Supreme Court. I mm-hmm. don't think that's the case. I kind of think it's the chief justice. And, you know, he's yes. always said that elections have consequences. Mm-hmm. Well, mm-hmm. we've got an election that the consequences, the Second Amendment should be respected by the federal courts. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we're excited. We have a case uh, sitting in front of the Supreme Court right now, and it is discussing how California continues to narrow and narrow and narrow and how the Ninth Circuit broadens what intermediate scrutiny means very easily. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So which case is this? Uh, this is Sylvester versus uh, Becerra these days. It's our case where we said that if you have a 10-day waiting period, but your check, background check comes back before 10 days, they can't force you to wait further if you already own a gun. Ah, yeah, because obviously you already have a gun, so you pass you know, the background check and all of that. So where are we with Pena? Yeah. Uh, Pena is sitting in front of the court. Um, we have not gotten an opinion after oral argument. It's been a bit more than 18 months at this point. So it, I'd say it's any minute now. And for your listeners, Pena is the California handgun roster, which is slowly but surely banning all semi-automatic pistols. And, I mean, and you're not exaggerating on this one. It slowly but surely is banning every semi-automatic pistol so that there will be zero semi-auto pistols available for sale in California. That's right. Only the major manufacturers are keeping old models alive to stay on the roster. Any new model 
There's a requirement for micro stamping, which is a fictional technology as it was implemented in California law. So, you know, unless you can put unicorn parts in a new gun, it's not going to be making the California roster. Let me ask you, uh, and, you know, and if you don't want to go there, don't, but uh, HR 38, reciprocity and fixed NICs, uh, we're just hearing all sorts of things from uh, people would call them rhinos, but people who pretend to support the Second Amendment but really don't like uh, reciprocity. Uh, from your perspective, way out there on the left coast, uh, when you look at HR 38 and such, what do you see? Look, we've got to have carry, and you know, anytime the red states kind of look at it and go, "Well, we've got our rights," and screw you. Uh, you're talking about 50, 52 percent of the American population can't carry a gun in public. And long term, if we want the Second Amendment to be supported across all these United States, we need to make sure that people have these rights, even in New York, Massachusetts, California, Hawaii, etc. And by with reciprocity, if they say, "Well, look." People from Alabama and Texas and other states have been able to carry in New York for five years, and we've had no issues. It makes it a lot easier to pull back some of the restrictions in these states. That's right. And also, the current bill, as passed, would allow Californians to carry in California on a Utah license. Yes, exactly right. So, And I think that right. has been missed by a lot of people. You're right, because you can get a non-resident permit from another state and carry in your state with national That's reciprocity. Right. So uh, people in New York or Massachusetts could get a Utah permit and carry in their states. Well, look, you know, I often travel, and I sit there going, where am I going, and how, how will the odds I'll end up stuck in New York or New Jersey, right? Mm-hmm. And I would love to know that if I'm in the 50 United States, I can carry, period, full stop. Without going to jail. Yes. Correct. Exactly. And with and the ability to sue the person who arrests you and get your legal fees back. I mean, it's teeth in this bill. So you're saying that HR 38 is a good bill, and uh, and I know people are wringing their hands about uh, fixed nicks, but I see nothing in there other than just saying that's a way to enforce the law. Yeah, absolutely. We need to hold government accountable. If they're going to have this stupid thing, they need to actually report the people who are dangerous. I mean, I think all of us can agree that some people probably shouldn't have firearms. It's a narrow category, but gosh, when the federal government won't even report those, why do we have this? Yeah, exactly right. For more information on what's going on out in California, and please, if you're in California, you need to get involved with Cal Guns Foundation. It's calgunsfoundation.org. Uh, Gene, any other place we should send them? No, also, you know, obviously SAF, big supporters as well. Yeah, Second Amendment Foundation, SAF, Sierra Alpha Foxtrot.org. Gene Hoffman, thank you so much. Always a pleasure. Thank you, Tom. All right, take care. 866-TALK-GUN. I had forgotten that part of it. Yeah, H.R. 38. Uh, if you're in a state where you can't get a permit, you could get a non-resident from another state, and now you could carry in your state. Now, that makes it even better. Give me a call. What do you think of this? Now you can own a brand new revolver with roots in the 1800s. The astounding North American Arms Ranger 2. A break action, five shot, 22 Magnum mini revolver. Inspired by the Schofield Smith & Wesson of the 1870s, this seven ounce Magnum revolver is fun to shoot and easy to carry every day. Historic style, high tech, pocket precision. Check out the new top break Ranger 2 at NorthAmericanArms.com. NorthAmericanArms.com. Since 1937, Ducks Unlimited has led the charge on wetlands and waterfowl conservation. Wetlands reduce the effects of flooding and recharge our drinking water. But perhaps most importantly, they allow us to experience what makes the outdoors so great. Band together to rescue our wetlands. It's really pretty simple. Your carry gun is a life-saving device. It must be with you. That's what the Springfield Armory XDS is all about. Small enough to carry, big enough to shoot comfortably, shockingly slim, single stack, with a 3.3-inch or 4-inch barrel, available in 9, 40, or 45. Highly accurate, great trigger, fiber optic front sight for fast aimed fire. The XDS at Springfield-Armory.com. That's Springfield-Armory.com. If you carry a gun, you need training. Your concealed carry class was definitely not training. 
But time, money, and obligations keep you from spending days at a shooting school. The trusted folks at Gun Talk can help. Concealed Carry One, our DVD featuring the Vada Group, covers what gun, what holster, how to carry, where to wear your gun, and much more. Visit ShopGunTalk.com. That's ShopGunTalk.com. Look, this really is life and death. Learn how to stay aware, how to get away, and how to fight if you must. At ShopGunTalk.com, you can get the two DVD set, including Fighting with the 1911 with Tiger McKee. No matter what gun you carry, this vital training info can save your life. Learn the draw, the stance, reloading, vital gear from Gun Talk. That's ShopGunTalk.com. ShopGunTalk.com. Laser sights offer an immediate advantage when visibility is poor and seconds count. Laser sights can de-escalate a deadly encounter by engaging the target with a laser, enhancing your ability to protect your family, home, and country. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. All right, let me tell you how my day started. We get a call this morning, and uh, it says the alarm's going off over at uh, Ryan's house, and we're calling him and not getting any answer over there. Well, Ryan and his family are at church, Ryan being my son. Uh, and the police have been called. True story, this morning. Can you go over there? Well, yeah. So jump up, you know, jump into a pair of pants and put on some clothes and jump in the car and take off down there and go in and check it out. By, by the time I get there, the police have been there and they've left. And so I go check it out and it looks good and there's no problems. And it's just one of those deals that if you have a one of our old-fashioned security systems, which I've had them, <laughs> you know, the wind blows, rattles the, a window, and the contact breaks, and all of a sudden, you know, the alarm goes off, and the police have been called, and the neighbors are going wacko, and, I mean, that, that's how my day got started today. Um, it's one of the reasons I like my little Blink camera system. I, I've got these little cameras from Blink. You set them up, and they alert you when they – they've got motion detection, so if you get – motion you get an alert on your phone that tells you you know somebody's in the house or somebody's outside the house and you can look real time you can look at the cameras and say okay that's that or that's a thing there or no there's nobody there or that's the cat or whatever it happens to be and you can look at live video you can record the video you can uh, record still pictures and it just all happens on your app so it's pretty darn foolproof proof it took me all of five minutes to set them up they're easy it's a little bit of cameras and you can put them anywhere, battery powered. Run off, like run forever, it seems like, off of uh, AA batteries. But if you want to take advantage of this, the Blink guys are working with us. And they said, look, you can get three of their cameras for what the other guys charge for one. Uh, and you get an extra 10% off if you use the Gun Talk code, okay? So you go to blinkprotect.com slash gun talk. Again, blinkprotect.com slash gun talk. Now, when you get there, uh, you will get to the discount field of the checkout. Put the word gun talk in there. One word. Upper or lowercase, doesn't matter. Gun talk, one word, and you'll get an extra 10% off. Blinkprotect.com slash gun talk. Uh, oh, that's cool. Uh, I think I may have mentioned earlier. A high point uh, has a new carbine in 10 millimeter auto, about 390 bucks. Yeah, I know it's a high point, but hey, you know, 390 bucks. That's that's not shabby. Oh, by the way, we're, uh, we've got a heck of a deal going right now. Uh, 40%, 40% off our DVDs. We've got... Conceal Carry 1, Conceal Carry 2, Fighting with the 1911, which is not just about 1911s. It's Tiger McKee's really good material on gunfighting. Uh, you go to guntalk.com slash rewards. Now, you've got to fill out a survey when you get there, but then it qualifies you. I also checked. We're running really low on DVDs. Uh, I don't know if we're going to have enough to get through the holiday season. If you want to do this, you're going to need to move fast to get a hold of all these. 40% off is a heck of a deal. Guntalk.com slash Rewards? Is that what it was? Yeah, rewards. There you go. And yeah, don't forget to update your gun dealio app because it's not going to be working. You may have it on your phone and it looks like it's working, but it's not working. You're not getting your alerts. So you need to uh, update that. So you start getting all these deals that are going out all the time because there are deals going out, trust me, all the time. All right. Let's see here. 
was this thing here? Oh, I like this one. It's a story out of Mississippi. There are new gun stores and ranges popping up everywhere. It's like mushrooms after a rain. Uh, Two Gun Tactical is the name of the place. Now, check out the first part of the story. Imagine this in some states, right? Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant and First Lady Deborah Bryant helped celebrate the opening of two-gun tactical indoor shooting range in Flowood. They fired, this is the, the governor, they fired some of the first shots at the range during its grand opening on November the 10th. Um, the Let's see, co-owner John White says, We saw a need not only for an indoor gun range, but for a place where one can learn and train. They're, it's, they're really all about the training. And they're saying that the research they're seeing is that among first-time gun buyers, 90% of them are seniors and women. First-time gun buyers, 90% of them are seniors and women. They uh, offer a try-before-you-buy program. For 15 bucks, you get to shoot a gun before you buy it. He says that way you spend $15 and you don't walk out with something you're not happy with. Brilliant. We've been talking about that for years of... Rent before you buy. Go to a place where you can rent some guns. Try those out, okay? Just pretty sweet idea. But I love the idea that the governor is there for the opening of a gun store and shooting range. All right, let's go to line three where John's with us out of Oklahoma. Hello, John. You're on Gun Talk. Wow. I'm all on Twitter here. Uh, whatever you're paying your call screener, you're not paying her enough. You need to... Oh, don't tell her that. She gets the big head when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm due for a cut, so I'm trying to boost your salary. <laughs> as I was telling her moments ago, I heard on the uh, uh, an advertisement on 1170 AM here out of, uh, out of Tulsa, mm-hmm. they were boasting about the North American Arms Ranger 2 yeah. chambered in 22 Magnum, mm-hmm. and uh, they said something which really, really caught my attention. They said it was a top break. Yes, it is. Now, here's the thing. Let me just jump in here. It's not, we don't have one yet, and we're supposed to do a video on one like the next few days. So I think it's like that close to coming out. We were going ahead and announce it. But yeah, it's a top break, 22 Magnum, kind of like the old Schofield. I am so, I tell you what, keep watching our videos on Facebook, Gun Talk. Look for Gun Talk on Facebook because as soon as we get it, we're going to do a video on this uh, brand new gun. Sign up for our Gun Talk newsletter and join the Truth Squad at www.guntalk.com. Now, back to Gun Talk with Washington Times opinion page regular contributor, Tom Gresham. I told you there's a time when people are bringing out new, or at least now announcing new products. So Remington just announced this week a detachable box magazine version of its venerable Model 870 pump. Think about that. You've got the 870 pump, one of the great shotguns of all time. Uh, it's going to come with a single six-round magazine. Three and six-round magazines will be available. I don't know how long it's going to take before somebody makes like a 20-round mag for that thing, but they will. Uh, home defense, as well as competition, detachable box magazine for your 870 pump. I love the idea. No word yet if they're going to do that to an auto-loading or semi-automatic version. Let's see. Mentioned before, we got uh, Springfield Armories has the M1A in 6.5 Creedmoor. Also, Savage is adding the 338 Federal. That's a necked up 308 up to 338. Uh, they're adding that to their AR5 or AR10 line, basically MSR. It's called the Hunter Rifle, and that is from Savage. A lot of stuff going on. A lot of new products out there. Let's go to Mike on line three out of Dodge City, Kansas. Mike, what uh, what's this about your daughter? Uh, she had a, they had a neighborhood prowler, so she'd got a gun, mm-hmm. and uh, the back windows were being broke out of her back patio, and she called 911 and uh, told the lady, the dispatcher, lady dispatcher, and uh, she says, I have a gun. The lady dispatcher says, well, don't get it. <laughs> Scared the belly heck out of her, the EBGBs, everything. So she didn't get the gun. She she obeyed. But she thought that she had the authority to tell her not to get a gun. And when the cops got there, it took five of them to take the guy down after they had tasered him and pepper sprayed him. 
Okay, so I assume at this point you've talked to your daughter that a dispatcher cannot give you a legal, lawful order to not get your You're gun. Darn you darn right. You should absolutely ignore that. And yeah, and oh see, my I gosh. got her to get on the gun dealio, and the last uh, several weeks here she's been watching the home to self-defense videos on it, and during Thanksgiving she went over to the iPod, and uh, I think that's what it is, and let me listen to the after-gun shows, and I think you guys are a bunch of nuts. <laughs> we are a bunch of nuts. When, when you listen to the after show, you know we're a bunch of nuts. <laughs> yes, but it is great. I got to listen to that. I have a dummy phone. She has a smartphone, of course, and she knows the operator. But she's got gun dealio and been watching your your home defense things now. And she understands that if she does that next time or if anything like that happens again, call 911. But while you're doing it, get your gun. Yeah, I mean, look, here's the thing. It took, it took him five minutes to get there or ten minutes or whatever it is. That's a long time yeah. if somebody's wanting to do you harm. You, I, I'm going to get my gun first because yeah. a person on the phone cannot help you. Let's get this straight, people. A person right. on the phone cannot help you any more than when I'm flying my airplane. The air traffic controller cannot fly the airplane for me. Yes. You know, i got to take but care of the, the issue. She has enjoyed the home defense things. She's learned a heck of a lot. We discussed it during Thanksgiving mm -hmm. dinner and stuff like that, and she she just feels a lot better about herself now. The only thing is she's got a, a, a double-action-only pistol, 38, and it's got about a 12-pound trigger pull mm -hmm. on it. And I showed her my 357 Ruger, and it's got a double pull and a single action, of course, and she loved the heck out of the trigger pull on it. Just, just loved it. So okay, we're going to get her a different gun. Let me jump in here, Mike. Don't get her a double action, uh, regular double action revolver and have her think that she should cock the hammer on that because that is a really, really bad idea in a self-defense situation. You do not want to cock the hammer when you're right, in a self-defense situation. Told her that. Okay. I've already told her that. That's the reason why I think a Smith & Wesson or a Ruger, they both got good double smooth double action pulls yep. on them on the trigger pull. But uh, this is a hammerless uh, double see. action, yep. 38 only. You and know, like the other thing you can do, she, she's already watching the first person defender shows. She's learning about self-defense. She's getting it into her. She's working on her mindset at this point. That's great. I would strongly urge you, even if you got to fund it for, get her to a good one or even a, even better, a two-day self-defense shooting class where they do a lot of shooting and maybe even some moving. Uh, she'll come away with that with a whole new, a different level of uh, feeling of accomplishment and competency. To uh, Thanksgiving while we were there, went down to a Range 54 uh, shooting gallery and gun store and looked at the prices and what it cost for her to go in and get some lessons. They've got lady lessons, I think, on the, if I remember correctly, a Monday and a Tuesday night, uh -huh. and they're really decent, and they got lady instructors. Good. Good. So I'm going to try to get her in talk to that. She's just she's balking at that a little bit. She doesn't mind coming out and shooting with her and my wife, me and my wife, but this, this, somebody else that she doesn't know, Mm -hmm. But I think once she gets in there, she'll have a lot of fun. I think you're right. She will have a bunch of fun. Mike, thank you so much for that call. That is uh, that's terrific. She has the gun dealio uh, on her phone. She's getting the deals off of that. She's uh, listening to the after show, which if people don't know, that's the additional part of the show we do after the regular broadcast. And he's right. We are a bunch of nuts. Uh, you can actually hear what's going on. And uh, you can just imagine how kind of crazy it is around here. It is. Uh, line two, Peter's with us out of Anderson, South Carolina. Peter, you're on Gun Talk. Good afternoon, Tom. Thanks for taking my call. You bet. I had a, a thought uh, that you may want to talk about with Alan Gura when you have him on, if yeah. you haven't talked about this, and I haven't heard it. The Supreme Court decided about a year ago a case called Utah versus Strife that relates to search and seizure. And, you know, you've always said that if, if the policeman asks, can I look in your car, you just say politely no. Mm -hmm. And this may have changed that somewhat. Okay. Uh, simply put, Mr. Strife was seen to leave a premises that was thought to be a drug house. The police stopped him. They searched him. They found drug paraphernalia. His lawyer wanted to have that thrown out of court as the fruit of the poison tree. Mm -hmm. But in stopping the individual, they got his name. They checked his record. They found he had what is described as a minor traffic violation. And I can't really find out if this was speeding or parking or whatever. Mm -hmm. But on that basis, he was arrested and searched pursuant to that arrest. 
and the drug paraphernalia was found. Okay, so he had, allowed... an out, he had an outstanding uh, warrant on a traffic violation, is what you're saying. Right. Right. Okay. And the Supreme Court allowed the evidence to be introduced then pursuant to that search. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you have to have made a mistake. You have to have left a traffic ticket unpaid somewhere. But in that situation... Uh, you know, the police can go ahead and search your car, it sounds it's, like. That's good information. I, I was not aware of that case, but it's an important point. It's, you know, I guess our takeaway from that is clean up your messes. If you've got an outstanding warrant or you've got a traffic violation or something, don't just keep shoving those parking tickets uh, into the glove compartment. Take care of that stuff because that can give the police the ability, the power to arrest you. And at that point, they can do a search uh, of your person and your car. Good point. Thank you, sir. 866-TALK. Gun. We are open line, so if you have something you want to talk about, or maybe a gun that you want to tell us about, or maybe something you want to ask us about, or even if you hate guns, we love those calls. 866 Talk Gun. If you're a hardcore duck hunter, Mossberg has a gun for you. The new Pro Series shotguns were designed and built to be the most reliable, most durable semi-automatic duck guns anywhere. Rain, ice, snow, it doesn't matter. When the weather gets tough, these new Mossberg shotguns will keep the shot flying and the ducks falling. This season, don't leave anything to chance. Head to your blind with one of the new Pro Series shotguns from Mossberg. Great performance at a great price. Learn more at Mossberg.com. Are you looking for a place to shoot? The National Shooting Sports Foundation has a great website called wheretoshoot.org. It's the largest database of shooting ranges on the Internet. It's also a great resource for shooters where you can find video tips, printable targets, and a lot more. Find it online at wheretoshoot.org. And while you're there, download their free iPhone app. That's wheretoshoot.org. In the war on terror fighting crime in the streets, in competition, and homes around the world. One name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. The time is now to band together. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. been an interesting week or so for the media. Um, those of us in this world, the firearms side of things, we've known for a long time how, what's the right word? Dishonest, I guess is the way to put it. The d- dishonest, the coverage of our issues has been in the mainstream media. When it comes to guns, they ignore the positive stories. They search out the negative stories. And then they spin the negative stories to try to push their agenda. This is nothing new. We've known this for decades, frankly. But it's interesting because now the world is seeing how the American media, and I don't know what it is, maybe the Obama era made them feel emboldened that, you know, hey, we can go ahead and lie and who's going to call us on it, right? Because, you know, he likes us. Well, except that now we've got. This week, we had uh, the Brian Ross ABC story, which caused the stock market to drop by 350 points, cost people billions of dollars. It was wrong. It was a phony story. Fake news, as they say. Then we had the story that, uh, let's see, the, the Mueller investigation team had subpoenaed the financial records from Deutsche Bank, Trump's financial records. Turns out, no, no, that's not true either. CNN had an exclusive on that one. Exclusive. We're going to be first out. And then all the other media picked up on it because it was a, an anti-Trump story. They wanted to carry that. 
And then just yesterday, we had uh, one of the media guys tweeted a picture of the Trump rally. And he says, see, there's basically nobody there. He says, it's not filled to the rafters, except he took a picture that was shot several hours before the rally. I think it's the one in Jackson, Mississippi. When the actual rally was held, it was standing room only. It was full. What's happening is that more and more people are realizing how utterly dishonest the general media is and how you can't believe them. We've known that for a long time on the gun side of things. I mean, it just just is. It's a given. It's a fact. They are dishonest. As one of them said to a friend of mine, look, here's the deal. We're not allowed to say anything positive about guns or gun ownership. If we do, it is a firing offense, and the way we get around that is when we're invited to any kind of event where something positive about guns may be involved, we simply decline. They're just open about it. We're going to slant our news. We're going to lie about this. So if you get to thinking, wow, the media is really slanted and biased. Yes, it is. And now with these three stories breaking this week, I think everybody's kind of figured it out. Uh, we've known it for years, and kind of like the uh, the line in uh, Die Hard, welcome to the party, pal. <laughs> line three, Richard's in Yellow Spring, West Virginia. Richard, what's up? Hey, what's happening, buddy? Listen, first of all, thank you for what you do. Appreciate it. Yes, indeed. Uh, secondly, uh, I wanted to make a comment about the uh, open carry situation. Sure. Uh, various people will say that it makes you a target. Uh, the bad guy sees you with a gun. He's going he's gonna to come for you first. Okay. Well, uh, I watch him. You know, when I'm in public, I watch for people watching me. Um, I don't care if it makes people uncomfortable. I want my protection at my fingertips. I'm not going to fumble with my coat or my shirt. Um, I'm not going to wrestle with him. <laughs> okay. Let me ask you this. You say you're, you're watching him. How do you know who's the bad guy? He knows you who know. you are because you, he can see your gun, but you've got 100 people out there. How do you know which one's the bad guy? Well, you don't, Tom. You just don't. But he, no knows who, but, but he knows who you are. Sure. I'm not disputing that at all. Okay. Uh, I just feel I have a better chance um, with my tool at the ready. What do you carry? Uh, most of the time I carry a revolver. I got a four inch barrel Colt that, I, uh, I just love. Um, uh, I've just recently purchased a, uh, 1911 frame in nine millimeter. Um, I'm going to try to make friends with the automatic world. <laughs> well, it, it'll catch on. I, I think this semi-automatic thing is going to catch on. I think you're going to be okay with that. You'll have fun with it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so, maybe All so, right, but Richard, I like look, the simplicity. I appreciate uh, the call, and I appreciate you, uh, you know, just let me know how you feel about it. Let me jump down to uh, Frank in Talkeetna, Alaska, on two. Frank, what's happening in Talkeetna? Well, we're doing fine. Temperature's 31.5 degrees here. Nice. Nice warm day it's there. kind of summer. Yeah. Listen, I'll tell you what I just did. Hanukkah is next week. Tuesday, mm-hmm. I believe, right. and I bought my son-in-law a one-year subscription to the NRA. <laughs> I love and I it. I should ask you to ask your listeners, buy somebody a subscription either for Hanukkah or for Christmas yep. even. I like it. Uh, get them an NRA membership for Christmas, for Hanukkah. I think that's a grand idea. It's not terribly expensive. You can get one for anybody. Uh, that's terrific, Frank, and way to go. Good job there. Um, I've, all, I've always said I've never understood why, generally speaking, in the Jewish community, they tend to be anti-gun. If ever there was a people who should understand what happens when only the state has the firearms, that would be a group that should get that. Uh, the Jews for the Preservation of Firearms Ownership certainly had that message out there. I don't know. Don't get that one, that's for sure. But that's, I love the idea. Giving NRA memberships for Christmas and Hanukkah. That's pretty cool. Have you ever given away, given somebody an NRA membership? Did they respond well? Did you ever have any pushback on it? Love to get that. 866-TALK-GUN. Hey, when we come back, we'll get a range report on some ammo. 866-TALK-GUN. I'm Tom Gresham.
All right, back with you. Going straight to Homer. He's in Farmington, New Mexico on one. You got a range report for me, Homer. Yes, uh, this is about uh, Federal Guard dog ammo. You know, that's supposed to be lower uh, penetration. Right. Well, I have a report on that. Tell me one about was it. Fired, it was in a forty-five auto. Mm-hmm. It was fired from about 10 feet in a trailer. It went through a bottle of, uh, of dish soap where most of the expansion took place, mm-hmm. up to about a half inch or a little better. Then it went through uh, uh, an eighth-inch mirror and then an eighth-inch wall and deposited the jacket inside the bathroom. Did you and fire? Did bullet, you fire? Did you fire this round? Yes. What was going on? Why were you shooting in the trailer? Well, it was, it was accidental. Okay. Given how that goes. Anyway, the bullet went on another three feet and went into the uh, uh, went through a, a, a half inch redwood wall and dropped into the shower. And that's as far as it went. Okay. What so do you I think? was. Uh, I was I was uh, pleased with the lack of uh, excessive penetration. Okay. Um, well, I imagine if you're going to be shooting off NDs inside, it's probably good to have something that doesn't escape. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. <laughs> okay. You you know I'm giving you a hard time here, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Just just saying here. Uh, let's keep our uh, our finger off the trigger uh, because that's the only way those things go off. I am, and look, I appreciate the call, appreciate the range of port, weird though it may be. Um, I am skeptical of a load where they say this has less penetration. There's a certain amount of penetration that, I like the FBI protocol, and they call for a certain amount of penetration, a certain amount going through partition, through walls, through glass, through different things, and they test them. And I think, I want to say it's supposed to be like 16 inches in gel, something like that. And the guard dog ammo has considerably less I'm not sure I want to depend upon a less powerful round, which may not get through the stuff to stop the bad guy as a way of ensuring safety of people outside the building or in other rooms, as opposed to just not touching off NDs or shooting where you're not supposed to shoot. And um, I know he was calling with a, uh, an honest range report, but... <sighs> yeah... Um, here's the thing. It's winter. People are wearing heavy coats. Uh, there's ammo that won't go through heavy coats. I don't know what this stuff does. I, I haven't tested it. But it sounds like you don't have a whole lot of penetration there. Now, if you're shooting people on the beach, you know, maybe it works okay. I, if I knew what the conditions were going to be in a self-defense situation, I would be able to tailor my ammo to that. Short of that, I want something that's going to get through other stuff and get to the the bad guy. Inside a house, if I am concerned with going through walls, I'm going to suggest to you, and right, people make fun of me, but I tell you this works, I'm going to go with birdshot and a shotgun. If my overwhelming concern was penetration, or, and it's going to sound really weird, or I'm going to go with an AR-15. An AR-15, especially with varmint ammo, will not, and I've done this. I've set up three walls. I've shot through multiple walls. It's not going to penetrate. It's not going to do that. All handgun bullets go through a bunch of walls. Buckshot goes through a bunch of walls. Uh, Slugs go through a bunch of walls. But shotgun with birdshot will absolutely stop somebody at inside of 10 yards, certainly 10 feet. And then an AR-15 has lots of power, but weirdly enough, strangely enough, surprisingly enough, doesn't have as much penetration as you think through sheetrock. We could not get it to go through a second wall in our testing. You pay your money, it makes your choices. In the meantime, the main thing is to get some training so you hit what you're going supposed to hit, and then you keep your finger off the trigger until it's time to shoot. Keep getting that training. <laughs> 